it is it a bit awesome on occasions that people have such high expectations of you? Um, it hasn't been awesome yet. For me, it's difficult to get carried away with the headiness of it. Most of it is so mundane. The moments that you fly, where you really lift off, are real few and, and rare and on a set, on a day, and they have to be guarded, you know. They still happen for me. As soon as that goes away, then I'll... It didn't take long for Meryl Streep to be considered the greatest actress of her generation. Her first movie appearance was in 1977's Julia, her first Oscar came two years later, and three years later another one for what was immediately considered one of the greatest acting performances in movie history. And at the risk of sounding patronizing to you, Meryl, I have to say that I truly believe your performance as Sophie will rank as one of the all-time great performances by an actress on film. Of course, you could spend hours discussing Meryl Streep's talents and the reasons for the overwhelming amount of praise her work received and continues to receive, but at the beginning of the 80s, what most caused this regular acclaim was her ability to jump from one character to the next, apparently without any connection, switching accents, personalities and behavior seamlessly in a way that was simply too outstanding to ignore. She started in supporting roles that already displayed her talents to go deep into the mind and soul of another person, but her switch to leading parts, beginning with the French lieutenant's woman, sealed her reputation as the most relevant and versatile screen actress of her generation. She switched from the dual role of an American actress and an English outcast to a Polish Holocaust survivor, and only a few years into her movie career, she had already reached the top. And she would stay there with her next performance. As a blue collar woman whose growing social and political awareness brings knowledge, passion, and ultimately her own defeat. On November 13, 1974, Karen Silkwood left a meeting in Crescent, Oklahoma, to meet a reporter from the New York Times. She had allegedly incriminating documents with her that would prove that her employer, Kerr McGee, was operating its nuclear plant under unsafe working conditions. Only seven minutes later, she was found dead after her car had gone off the road. While the official story is that she fell asleep under the influence of alcohol and sedative medication, rumors about Karen Silkwood having been murdered persist to this day. Karen Silkwood, an employee at an Oklahoma nuclear facility, was on her way to meet with a reporter from the New York Times. She never got there. Plans about turning Karen Silkwood's life into a movie were developing basically right after her death. Producers Buzz Hirsch and Larry Kano spent years securing the rights to the story, talking to people that knew Karen Silkwood personally and trying to get interest in her life by Hollywood studios. While researching, they were sued by Kerr McGee to reveal all their documents, tapes and transcripts, which then led to a relevant court ruling by the US Court of Appeals that granted filmmakers the same First Amendment protection afforded to print journalists. And Kano and Hirsch could continue with the project. These legal problems delayed the production and both Jane Fonda, who would do the China Syndrome instead, and Warner Brothers dropped out of Silkwood. The Los Angeles Times called the project hopelessly mirrored in legal controversy, and there was doubt if the story of Karen Silkwood would ever be seen on the screen. The making of the China Syndrome added to this holdup, as studios wanted to wait and see how audiences would react to stories about the danger of nuclear energy. It will start with a tremor in a nuclear power plant, where it will end will depend on three people. Then everything changed in 1979 when Meryl Streep became involved in the project. Her agent Sam Cohen also connected some of his other clients with Silkwood, including Nora Ephron, Mike Nichols and Cher. The shooting finally almost began in early 1982 when Meryl Streep told Hirsch and Kano that she would do Sophie's choice first. But only a couple of weeks after Meryl Streep completed Sophie, the production on Silkwood could finally begin. Like most biographies, Silkwood took some liberties with its story, but also stayed as close as possible to the real life events. Meryl Streep herself said of her approach to the role, I didn't try to turn myself into Karen. I just tried to look at what she did. I talked a lot with Drew Stevens, who was her lover. I met with her dad. And basically what I figured out is that everybody has a different impression of you. Sweetheart's like your two people. I'm in love with one of them. But the other one's 
This is a real pain in the ass. These different impressions also surrounded the discussion about Karen when Silkwood was released in December 1983. As one newspaper put it, was Karen Silkwood a martyr of the anti-nuke movement or a promiscuous, disgruntled drug user who tried to manufacture evidence against her employer? But what it does is tells you what kind of uh, person Karen Silkwood was and what kind of people evolve into mythical heroes and real heroes. She's both. Karen Silkwood is often referred to as the most famous workplace whistleblower of all time, whose name today stands for health and safety on the job, and Newsweek listed her among the top 10 modern heroes in 1979. While other media, unsurprisingly, focused on her three children as well as her divorce, her drug use, her casual relationship with Drew, and even her roommate in a way that make her look like an untrustworthy person, as she didn't fit the expected norms. Meryl herself stayed out of most of the discussions about the real Karen, her motives and the details surrounding her death, only focusing on the character she was playing in this movie. Besides her research, she did not actively try to imitate what was known about Karen Silkwood, which was based on reports about her, pictures and some tapes of her voice. In the lavatory, we've got 18 and 19 year old boys, you know, and 20 and 21. And they didn't have the schooling, so they don't understand what radiation is. But Meryl still felt very close to the essence of the character, describing her part as more like I am than others I have been able to play. I grew up in small towns. I worked for a living. I lived for a while in a commune in Vermont where nobody had any money and nobody knew whose things were whose. Just like in Karen's house. I felt we were a lot alike. It's therefore not surprising that even Karen Silkwood's parents later described Meryl's performance as startlingly accurate. <clears throat> I work in metallography, you know, in x-rays, and uh, sometimes we, well, quite frankly, we have negatives altered. Reviews of Silkwood itself were mostly positive, albeit mixed, some stating that the ideas behind it were more interesting than the actual movie, and calling it dismissively Norma Ray's China Syndrome. However, others described it as a brilliant character story that allows the terror to grow subtly in the hearts and minds of the audience. And the presentation of Karen Silkwood as a multidimensional person that defies preconceived ideas about her character, making her neither an anti-nuclear saint nor a drug-addicted troublemaker, was warmly received. As Meryl said it, the more I knew about Karen, the less I knew her. She was very hard to find. In this uncertainty of the character, her ability to be not what people expect also received the highest praise, obviously in connection with Meryl Streep's performance. I happen to think that every, all these, everything political is personal. Everything is very, very personal. And the more specific we get about each particular person's problems in played on the grand stage, I mean, that's, so that's the lesson of, of Shakespeare, you know, the more specific the king's neurosis, the more you know that events are going to shake down badly. Some critics may be noted that it became almost tiring of praising her work, but Meryl Streep again displayed her talents with a shatteringly effective and utterly realistic performance. A brilliantly faceted and subtle portrayal that again showed her incredible range. As I stated, Streep handles the transformation with skill and understatement, making it a logical progression that is less dogmatic than practical. She seems incapable of a misstep, and Vincent Camby wrote in the New York Times that she gave a gum-chewing tour de force. Some reviewers even called it the greatest work of her career, which surpassed her performance in Sophie's Choice, and she had again confirmed her status as the best actress of her generation. I don't believe you. Well, I think you should take a person's word for something. Despite all this praise, Meryl's performance in Silkwood often tends to be a bit overlooked in her filmography. Mostly this seems to be because it happened between her legendary work in Sophie's Choice and her appearance in the more well-known Best Picture winner Out of Africa. However, not only critics but also her fans often regard Karen Silkwood as one of the best performances of her career and some of her most natural and unaffected work. And that's an opinion I can agree with. Let's not have a fight now. Okay? Okay. You can always have a fight later. 
Hey, Drew. <laughs> Seeing Silkwood today means that one of the aspects that astonished critics in 1983 is missing. Her versatility in flawlessly jumping from Sophie to Karen and creating two completely different characters in such a short amount of time. Obviously, the versatility of Meryl Streep is by now self-evident, but even without considering the role in the larger context of her career and simply on its own, it is an extremely effective, three-dimensional and natural performance of a woman going through a significant personal change without changing her personality. Yeah, you know it's terrible what they do when they scrub a person. I've been through it, it ain't so bad. Did she have just external or was it internal? Just external, they said. Well, did they give her a nasal smear? That's how they tell about the internal. No, I don't think so. Shoot, I knew that. Why didn't I think of that? They should have given her a nasal smear. Well, you can't think of everything. Oh, they didn't even give her a nasal smear. Why are you so interested? Huh? Tell me that. Why are you so interested all of a sudden? From her first moment on screen, Meryl Streep beautifully adapts to her surroundings. She never comes across as a movie star who dropped onto her set, nor does she appear to try too hard. Instead, she naturally fits both into Karen's home as well as her work environment. Elda's birthday, Mr. Hurley, would you like a piece of cake? Hey, don't you lay this off on me now. Anybody else would have thrown Angela out day one. No, when Drew was here, you weren't like this. You think Angela left on account of me? Let me tell you something, girl. Drew left on account of you. On account of you and Angela. And more importantly, Meryl Streep has rarely better fitted into a large ensemble while still being the clear center who is on screen almost every second. Her chemistry with Kurt Russell always feels alive and believable, defined by mutual attraction and trust. Her work opposite Cher is always a real friendship, both rewarding and exhausting. I love you too. I don't mean I love you too. Hell, we could have kids around. We love each other. Huh? Why not? They wouldn't. They wouldn't come out right. Hell, I didn't come out right. You came out okay. But more than that, she also makes it believable that Karen has spent years in the nuclear plant and has different levels of friendship with everyone there, and she is able to switch between these moods effortlessly. Thelma, your hair looks different. You gave my daughter my good wig. Mm. Her hair's falling out. They give her them treatments. Oh, yeah. I'll switch with you. Don't tell Curtis here. You mean Curtis still doesn't like me? Oh. You know how he is. <laughs> hey, Wesley. Mm -hmm. Come here, I need the help of a train technician here. <laughs> we'll put it back in you. <laughs> hey, Jordan. Furthermore, the characterization of Karen is always consistent and comprehensive. Meryl has the wonderful gift to portray a woman who might not understand, but is still aware that different things she sees might be wrong. What would he know? He's a vet. That's what he was trained at. Thelma, you're okay. There is no internal contamination. Meryl doesn't give Karen more layers than necessary. She's an honest, straightforward person, but the result is still complex and full of depths. And this is another aspect that makes Meryl's performance so special. She is able to portray the change that is going through Karen, the slow realization of what she feels must be done, but the viewer constantly understands that Karen is not able to comprehend the bigger picture. 
As much as you sympathize with her deeds, this statement feels sadly true. I know what you're doing. And you're the wrong person to be doing it. Meryl's performance seems to work around this entire sentence, making the ambition and good intentions of Karen clear, but never denying her inability to fulfill them in a way that not upsets her co-workers or even endangers her own life. You monitoring yourself, Yes, Karen? Georgie. I hope you write it down in your little notebook every time you don't, along with the stuff about the rest of us. To be honest, I sometimes think that Silkwood was the movie that Debbie Reynolds watched before she made this legendary TV appearance. If I were to do Meryl Streep, it would be more, uh... Because yes, Meryl emphasizes her presence every second she is on screen. But while this sometimes can feel mannered and artificial, it does the exact opposite in Silkwood. Her gestures and her body language never feel technical but emotional and seem to come directly from Karen herself. In Meryl's performance, she is a woman who seems to want attention, who can be a nuisance and unlikable, but is also a true friend, someone who is honestly interested in the lives and conditions of her co-workers that she cares, even before she begins to uncover the illegal activities of her employer. Thelma, did they give you a nasal smear? No. Well, you make them give you a nasal smear, you know, they're supposed to. Make Hurley give you one, and make him tell you the count. And make sure he's telling you the truth, because there's a lot of liars around here. Her Karen is restless, observing all the time, serving as the audience's reference point and providing the point of view, but also allowing viewers to watch her from a distance. As Roger Ebert said it, we become witnesses instead of moviegoers. Oh, you. You know, it happens to girls that don't monitor themselves. Your nipples turn green. She is also not only devastating in the infamous shower scenes, but also in the moments before and after, not reducing the effect of those scenes to a specific moment, but putting them in a larger context and in her whole performance, she connects small and big moments with natural spontaneity. An acceptable level. And you're clean now. Yeah. <laughs> Been bringing your samples in? Every week. Start bringing them in on a daily basis. You can pick up your kits on the way out of the plant. I'm gonna be happy that they don't have to pee in a jar. <coughs> Meryl's body language has rarely communicated more about her characters than in Silkwood, showing joy, defeat, mistrust, or even overconfidence. Monitor yourself on the way out. As already mentioned, Meryl has especially great chemistry with Kurt Russell and Cher, and she manages to continue Karen's character journey without overshadowing their work. In fact, Cher's performance was singled out by many critics as the highlight of Silkwood due to its unexpectedness, but it worked in perfect sync with Meryl Streep's performance. Maybe we should just quit. Get out of here. Move someplace where it's clean. You and me. Oh. Jesus. <laughs> well. <laughs> so this is truly one of Mel's most unfussy and lived-in performances, when she is relaxed on the screen and organically creates a strong, vulnerable, curious, stubborn, lost and unafraid to be unlikable character. A woman who desperately wants to rise to the occasion but is not able to. Like Deborah Winger's Emma, Karen is a character the audience grows close to, and there is pain when she is suddenly ripped away. I'm contaminated. 
I'm dying. So maybe not everyone is aware anymore of the work of Meryl Streep in Silkwood, but it truly stands as one of the strongest, most natural and memorable performances in a career full of exciting and rewarding work. If many reports about Karen Silkwood paint a black or white picture of her, Meryl Streep's performance captured her in all her colors. So let's take the fear of radiation and nuclear disaster one step further. 